Hello, this is another episode on drugs in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. My name is Eric, and welcome to the craziness that lives inside my head. I was out of control. Definitely by the 80s. My sister introduced me to angel dust. I thought mescaline was pretty bad. I love mescaline in the 70s because mescaline kept me dancing all night. You take a mess tab, you you, you get kind of a school, let's go, 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 all night long. Now she introduced me to angel dust. And I already told you from the 60s how I like to be dizzy and go crazy out of my head. What Angel does did that. I mean, I could tell you stories. I had an Angel Dust party. I smoked so much Angel Dust, I didn't know who I was. I'm walking around the party. Who am I? Where am I? What's my name? I was like, I was out of it. Good thing I was at my sister's house. I was out of it. I had smoked so much angel dust. I think I just came from seeing, um, what's that movie? The scary, oh, uh, E.T. Go Home? Or oh, E.T. Come Home, whatever. Well, I smoked so much angel dust after seeing that movie. I was in the middle of Lenox Avenue and 115th Street pointing to the sky telling people, E.T. Go Home. E.T. Go Home. I loved it. I loved it. Anything that makes me go crazy, I loved it. And plus, like I told you, I was a blackout drinker. So any drug I took, I drank along with it. And half the time, when I wake up, I'm always waking up in somebody's, some strange man's bed. When I don't wake up in my own bed, I wake up in somebody else's bed and I turn him, what's your name? You know, <laughs> I don't, don't ask me where I meant him, how I meant him. All I know is what, when I meant him, I had to be out of my mind. And I loved every minute of it. Now, along with zoo, uh, 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 Angel Dust, the best at the time, if they had something called Zooty, that was one of the best Zooty. They had a, they, each these Angel Dust each had a name, and if it has a name on it, it's the best. It downright make you go nuts. Now, my my sister was in well. I started working on Wall Street, and when I, that's when I got into cocaine. You know, you, you know, cocaine was okay. It was, it was all right. I liked it. I mean, I think cocaine kind of remind me of mescaline. You know, you party all night, you party all day, you shake your body, shake it to a drop. Yeah, yeah, I love that too. You know. So anyway, um, but she freeze base her cocaine. And you heard the story about um, Richard Pryor. I watched my sister free bases. I think she put it in the spoon. And I watched her cook it and cook it and all like that. And I said, I ain't doing that. If I can't take it right without doing all that mess, I want something that I could just pop in my mouth and go. And that was mescaline or smoke. And like I told you, I'm not a reefer. I did, I, 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 reefer did, did nothing for me. But they claimed that they spray reefer with um, elephant tranquilizer. That was angel dust. I don't know how true it is, but yeah, you you put elephant tranquilizer on that reefer joint, and I'll smoke it all day long, out of my mind. Now, after hearing all this, now I'm going to tell you how I got sober. Because I worked on Wall Street, and I was told that we had to open up in the morning. It was a snowstorm coming to New York City. And we had to spend overnight at the, at the, on the trading floor because I work for, you know, I work for Wall Street and they had to open up no matter what. So they were keeping us there overnight and we had to be in the building by 10 p.m. So you know, I don't want to be all night with strangers sleeping on cocks, with, you know, they're not strangers, but fellow employees sleeping on cocks, sober, it would drive me crazy. So what did I do? 
I had up to 10 p.m. to get my groove on. So what did I do? I went and I went to a bar. I think I drank, I don't know how many drinks, but uh, Southern Comfort and Orange Juice was my favorite. I don't know how many of those I had. Of course, you know, I had to smoke a joint, Angel Dust joint. Not to mention, I met, ran into some friends before 10 o'clock and we did snort some cocaine. And, and I may have, I probably did, had a tab of um, mescaline. Let's put it this way. When I went in that building, I was a lunatic. A lunatic. A gay lunatic. If you didn't know I was gay before 10 p.m. at work, when I got there at 10 p.m., you knew I was gay. I was cruising the security guard. I was cruising guys that, you know, these big butch guys that would kick my ass. I was just out of my mind. So they called the cops. No, I, I bring the, they did call the cops. But the reason why they called the cops, because the security guard didn't like the fact that I was kissing that hand. I kept doing this. So he said, you have to leave. I said, I'm not going nowhere. So he grabbed me, tried to push me out the building, and I pushed him back and he fell down. Now, you know, that's very embarrassing for a macho man to get me pushed down by some fat gay guy. So he called the cops. It took six cops to get me out of that building. Into a, By the time they got me in the patrol car, I was stoned, I was Naked. That's what everybody told me. I was, they had, because they was pulling on my clothes. My, they pulled my clothes off because I wouldn't let the, you know, to try to grab me. You know, I was stone naked by the time they got me in the patrol car. And they didn't, and what saved me, they didn't take me to book me. They took me to Bellevue Hospital. So the next morning, I woke up strapped to the bed at Bellevue in the psych ward. And that was my last drink and drug and acting crazy. Well, now I act crazy normally, sober, without all that crap. Because I was crazy all to begin with. Thank you for listening to the craziness that lives inside my head. <laughs>